Boom. All right, what's up, you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a special holiday edition of Crypto Convo. You guys, the crypto markets have been on the naughty list for the month of December so far. So let's hope we can see a quick turnaround before the fat man shows up in a few days. I do want to talk to you guys about a few scenarios I see playing out in terms of price action for a few of my favorite names in the crypto markets and a few names that are of course relevant to this channel so let's get into it keep it short and sweet today we'll go over a few of the names we'll be discussing and then we'll dive in on trading if you talk some technicals and price targets kicking it off you guys know the drill we got to kick it off with the king got to talk bitcoin first because the price action of bitcoin will heavily determine the price action and general direction of the rest of the crypto markets okay kick it off with bitcoin same principle applies for ether king of the alts so we'll move into ether right now um at least in the past 24 hours Bitcoin outperforming altcoins, okay? Ether, Mon is sand in the red while Bitcoin is in the green, showing kind of, um, sh that that tells me right up front that guards are up to an extent, but it's the weekend. Um, it's somewhat to be expected, but uh, we'll, we'll talk price action and talk about what's looking more promising on the charts as obviously we dive into them, okay? So kick it off with Bitcoin and Ether, move in to our favorite crypto metaverse plays, Mana and Sand, and then close it out with one altcoin that's a, a lot of you guys know i've been calling in the newsletter in some of these videos the moonshot this is an easy easy 10x in my opinion and uh it, it feels good to see this thing in the green and really outperforming and it does look very very good on the charts so we'll close out the video on the charts with rndr or good old render token okay the aws disruptor so those are the names we're going to be covering you guys before we dive in again going to do my best to keep it short and sweet today please Give the video a like if you're feeling bullish, even if you're not feeling bullish, it means a lot of you guys give the video a like. Still in the LA house, I will be flying back tomorrow morning and I will be back in the lab, back in the office on Tuesday. So look forward to getting back into my regular setup and uh, look forward to just getting back down to business, okay? And again, hopefully we see hopefully we see that green Christmas. So uh, means a lot of you guys give the video a like. Let me know in the comments down below what you think um, your price targets for BTC, ETH, Mana, Sand, Render are as we close out the year. If you're bullish or bearish moving into 2022, always interested in your guys' opinion on that. So I'll see you guys downstairs in the comments. And lastly, if you guys do want my opinion, not only on these, but how I'm going to be trading some crypto equities, Coinbase, right? I will cover those in tomorrow morning's newsletter as well as many other EV plays and other plays we talk about here on the channel along with a complete breakdown of my entire por uh, my entire personal portfolio, all of my call options, put options, stock positions, cryptocurrency positions, how I'm trading, why I'm trading them, along with every daily portfolio update on every trading day during market hours. I do also send out the email newsletter rationalizing my th thoughts, talking through my trades and letting you guys know why I'm trading the way I'm trading, okay? We got a volatile week ahead, you guys. We have a compressed trading week, you guys know, in the equity markets. I'm in crypto 20. 24 seven still should be exciting but equity markets we have a very compressed trading week this week okay so stay on your toes again if you guys want to know how i'm trading through this christmas week that's gonna be the first link down below in the description box 15 bucks a month or 40 bucks for every three months really means a lot if you guys check that out do my best to make that worth your hard-earned money um so again first link down below if not no worries i appreciate you watching now let's talk some crypto okay so Bitcoin again, kicking it off with Bitcoin, kicking it off with the king. Um, when we're zoomed out here, okay, you guys, we are still very evidently since Bitcoin's all time high back here on November 10th, over a month ago now, we are still in a very, very evident objective series of lower highs and lower lows, which would t technically define us in a downtrend, okay? So it's obvious that we are still in a downtrend from a medium term, uh, medium term perspective, I, I should say, I guess just <laughs> the current trend is obviously pointing to the downside. Okay. And we are still evidently below these lines of resistant resistance on said downtrend as well. Okay. Touch point here, touch point here. This is my conservative downtrend right here. You can see this line this trend line is somewhat in play by the way it's acting in the short term right here. Um, test, test bounced above. It came below it. Now retesting this previous line of, uh, resistance as new support. So I do like to see um, kind of glass half full perspective. Again, it's very we're, we're very very obvious. It, it's very obvious that we are in a downtrend, lower highs and lower lows. Um, but we have found somewhat of a strong floor around here, right around forty five, forty six thousand dollars. Okay, and uh, that's what I was saying 
like over the court, like since we balanced over here, it, it makes sense just based on uh, all the lines I have drawn here, you guys are just historical ceilings and floors for Bitcoin in the past, okay? So again, previous support becomes new resistance on some of these trend lines, but previous ceilings and or historical ceilings, previous ceilings and floors will usually act as said ceilings and floors in the future, present, whatever, okay? So we are trading within this range, but again, Bitcoin is still technically in a downtrend. In order for me to flip bullish on Bitcoin, uh, at least in the short term to see a pop and then break some of these levels that I really want to see in order to flip bullish for the medium term and really believe that uh, 2022 will bring another wave to the upside new all time highs. Uh, I do want to see at least 50k broken at this point if 50k is broken over the next few days that would break us officially out of this very, very obvious downtrend line of resistance on this downtrend that we've been in once again since Bitcoin's ATH. Um, and that would, I mean, 50K, obviously very significant psychological barrier as well. So I do want to see 50K broken to flip bullish. Um, bear case scenario, December 31st uh, is just, again, using this pretty conservative trend line. And uh, Bitcoin has been following this pretty damn organically. So if we do continue the trend to the downside, I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see a $40,000 Bitcoin December 31st. But um, as I was saying in, I think, the last video, Bitcoin is just too relevant to the global financial system at this point, and uh, it, its brand is too powerful for us. I mean, obviously, we could break below it, you guys. There's a lot of fear. We've seen panic. I mean, this is panic right here. We pretty much saw 40K already, but um, just from a fundamental perspective, from a base fundamental perspective, and the relevance, once again, Bitcoin holds in the global financial ecosystem, it doesn't make sense for me also uh, taking Bitcoin's market cap, uh, market cap into calculation as well for us to fall much below $40,000, okay? At least that's my opinion, all right? So that's Bitcoin. Let's move on to ETH, good old Ether. So Ether also still in a very, very obvious downtrend right here. These are a conservative trend line, orange, sharp, shorter term trend line is the red, both lines of resistance, of course, on said downtrends. Ether also printing lower highs and lower lows. For me to flip bullish on Ether, I mean, short term, we're pretty damn close to breaking the short term line of resistance uh, that began at the beginning of this month right here. So if Bitcoin, if Ether can break, I mean, right now, taking both these trend lines, trend lines into account, even the conservative one, I mean, if Ether broke $4,100 right now, if Ether can close a four hour candle of a $4,100 and that would flip me bullish. But uh, this line right here, this cyan line, I'm not going to zoom out, but uh, you guys have seen this. Uh, this has been on the chart forever. This is a very, very significant trend line for Ether from a longer term perspective, okay? So this is just a general trend line <laughs> up and to the right on Ether's overall uptrend of the of 2020, 2021. And uh, I do think this will uh, definitely come into play as well. It has a lot in the past. And uh, again, we are still in a very weird but technical series of lower highs and lower lows since ether's all-time high as well just under forty nine hundred dollars on november 10th so high low technically lower high i mean we almost got there this is a fake out going on to a lower low and uh, ether is in this very very weird pretty pretty moderate descending channel but when it comes to the short term, you guys, these are the trend lines I'm looking at. If Ether can close above 4,100, that would float me bullish. But again, Ether is still technically, objectively, in a downtrend. And uh, if we do just continue this downtrend that we're seeing in the short term right here, again, the series of lower highs and lower lows, um, I think it's very possible that Ether could revert to the mean back here. If you zoom out, Ether spent a lot of time over here. Again, historical ceilings become new floors. I do think that if we do see more downside and... Uh, I think that could be very likely. Again, the trend is we're we're in a downtrend right now, so that's just the reality of the situation. Um, if Ether does stay on the naughty list, I wouldn't be surprised to see us revert to this historical ceiling, use it as a new floor, um, base out around here around thirty two hundred dollars, and then go on to continue our uptrend. Okay, so that's Ether. Let's take a look at Mana real quick. So Mana looking good again. Mana downtrend, very sharp downtrend from its high November twenty fifth. Good times around six bucks. We'll be back, guys. We'll be back. Since then, have seen a pretty stark correction. Broke the line of resistance, bounced above it. Have been using this previous line of resistance. Perfect example right here of previous resistance as new support. Broke above it. Tested this previous line of support as new resistance right here. This is a very satisfying chart, if I'm being honest, you guys. And what I like to see with Mana right now is that we are in the short term, since basing out right here, 
setting a series of higher highs and higher lows in the short term, okay, following the breakout. So high, low, higher high. It seems like right now at the time of recording, Mon is in the red, but hey, I like the volatility we're seeing. We're seeing volume pick back up a little bit. And again, it's the weekend. So um, when it comes to the equity markets, you guys, I will just say right now, I do think we will see a Christmas rally in the equity markets because the past couple of weeks have been so freaking rough. And a lot of times crypto equities um, align well with altcoins, okay? So when crypto equities, when players like Riot and Mar, when Bitcoin miners... Um, Plays like Coinbase do well. A lot of times those are correlated a lot to altcoins, okay? Because that just shows risk appetite. All right, both crypto equities and altcoins I mean risk appetite is looking good, okay? And although Bitcoin is looking pretty strong right now, or not strong, I'm not going to say strong, but relative to the altcoins at this moment, I do think, again, um, once a little bit of the fear dissipates, the dust settles from the past couple of weeks of carnage, that's when we'll see that risk appetite pick back up. And uh, it makes me very, very bullish as we move into 2022 for risk assets, okay? So, anyway, Mono fundamentally, again, metaverse trend is obviously here to stay. And I still believe Q1, Q2 of 2022 will be massive. All of 2022, 2023, 2025, the metaverse trend is here, you guys. is here to stay. This is Bitcoin and uh, Ether back in 2017. That's, how I've, that's what I've been comparing it to. And, again, the charts, if you look back, we're not comparing charts right now. But... Charts, they all kind of line up. The same trends align when new macro trends are in play. And the metaverse trend is the macro trend right now, at least in my opinion, okay? So, Mana, again, short term, love to see this uh, series of higher highs and higher lows. Um, attracting a lot of attention. Again, looks a lot better than uh, many of the other plays in the market from a technical perspective. And I do think that it's very possible that Mana comes up once again, retests the line of resistance, the new line of resistance, previous support, proven his new resistance. If we can come up December 25th, right here, that'll take us to a $4.75 Mana. Let's get a quick price range on that from current levels. That represents almost a 45% price increase if we can retest, again, this line of resistance that's currently in play. Wouldn't surprise me at all. And uh, again, you guys, over, once I'm back in the office, we, we can talk some 2022 price targets for Mana and Sand. But right now, we're focused on Christmas. Um, sand, uh, pretty, I mean, pretty similar story. What I like about both Mana and Sand is that we're finding a really strong base. So once we get down uh, in Sandbox's case to around $4.70, you see so many bottoms around here, right? You see a lot of strong floor around $4.70. So right now, when it comes to upside versus downside, and I think the upside potential significantly outweighs the downside risk for Sand. Again, we reverted to the mean down here, technically retested the first, the initial high of this rally before that big parabolic move up, um, kind of establishing that floor again, reversion to the mean when you're seeing these parabolic rallies in these hyper growth uh, cycles is very important and you'll hear me say that a lot because we play those cycles a lot here on the channel and uh, again when you're looking at a correction uh, especially following a parabolic rally like this a hype driven rally a FOMO driven rally reversion to the mean is always when I'll be like yep I'm for sure buying once we revert to the mean the initial high of said rally okay so love to see that again strong floor around four dollars and seventy cents the, the momentum is is here. And again, as I just mentioned, I do think risk appetite will find its way back to the markets as we head into 2022. So Sandbox, similar story to uh, to Mana. Again, previous line of uh, support used as new resistance, confirmed as new resistance. Extend this out a little bit. Take that to December 25th. That would take us to about $7.25. Price range on this, probably close to 45% as well. Yep, 44, 45%. I mean... <laughs> Super similar charts, different stories, okay? And again, at this point, I still remain more bullish on Mana just due to liquidity purposes. And uh, it, it is just a more accessible token than Sandbox at this point in time. So that's the reality now. Again, longer term, who knows who will win the weight race. But right now, Mana is still kind of the alpha amongst the two, at least from a trader's perspective, okay? So let's close it out with the MVP of the moment, RNDR or Render Token. Again, the AWS, Amazon Web Services Disruptor. Render just earlier today broke a very very significant line of resistance okay so since renders all-time high november 20th right here eight dollars 75 cents which we did go on to see in a very very quick fashion again you guys rip hard fall hard that's the game but <laughs> fall hard bounce hard that's also the game it's trading physics 60 percent correction over the course of a month or so what a few weeks to a month but just earlier today maybe last night we did break through this line of resistance on the overall downtrend from renders ATH. So again, 
Obvious trend line, a lot of traders are looking at this. We did officially break that. That's why Render is one of the few plays in the green from a technical perspective. Volume is still looking freaking great on Render. And considering Render's liquidity is so low, it's still impressive to see millions in trading volume. Okay, average volume at like 3 million. It's been higher than that. I do think it'll pick up as more people understand what this token is. Render is still so low. Let's take a coin, coin market cap real quick and uh, take a look at where Render is. RNDR. So render token is rank 218 you guys and it still has a market cap of under a billion dollars and considering AWS is in itself like probably like a 250 to 500 I mean just super ballpark super ballpark you guys can go look at this up for yourself ballpark 250 to 500 billion dollar asset within Amazon because it's one of their primary revenue generators. Um, so AWS is like if you guys load into any website ever that data has to flow through a server through a massive warehouse full of servers like a Bitcoin mining kind of operation if you guys have seen that but that's what AWS is and that's one of Amazon's primary revenue generators if render can do that if render can disrupt and create a decentralized version of AWS then that's is a huge market that's uh, obviously again 250 500 billion you guys let me know in the comments down below if you guys can get that stack not going to look it up now um, but considering render is under a billion dollar mark cap say they can one day get to 100 billion from here that's an obvious 100x but short term we are in breakout mode uh similar with mono you guys if we just reflect the the parabolic rally that render saw not even counting the base here um but from the base of where we just started going parabolic from that initial parabolic rally you can see right here the hype is really picking up the volume is picking up that is about a 350 65 uh, price increase and that's actually very similar to mono and sand too so again you guys when you're playing these hype cycles these psychological rallies that's where you have to look at historical charts because FOMO and hype almost always works. It doesn't repeat, history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme, especially once again, when it comes to the crypto markets and these hype cycles, especially among, among the first pops, those first initial rallies. But hey, again, you look at Bitcoin and Ether's charts when they were first experiencing it, you can probably get a very, very good idea of how all of the plays we're talking about today, Monastan render will act over the coming years. Okay. So, uh, 365 percent if we re uh if we just copy paste that's 365 percent rally um to where we are now if we do see a breakout that would take render to 22 uh 22 dollars in 2022 so let's hope we see that you guys but in all honesty i wouldn't be surprised to see a 500 render token one day if they can execute properly all right so We'll call the video there, you guys. Again, we'll be back in the lab in a couple of days. Excited to get back. Hope you guys got your Christmas shopping done. I'm about to go do the same right now. It's probably going to be crazy, procrastinating a little bit, but should be a fun time, you guys. Let me know what Christmas gifts you're getting for yourself. Um, what the what your favorite gift to give is. That's more important, obviously. What is the gift you're most excited to give this year? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys downstairs. See you in a couple of days. See you tomorrow if you're part of the newsletter group, okay? So until next time, you guys, always remember, take action, make waves. Peace.